Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video, we're going to quickly make a lot of candy caddies. So I've got some tips about making a lot of them using little bits of paper and easy ways to reproduce them. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. Okay, we're going to begin with these framelits. And these are the Labels Collection framelits, but that's not where we're going to end. But you want to take the largest one and go ahead and cut a piece of cardstock. And the key to all these designs is the one inch base. And the reason I chose this one to begin with is because the center is clearly marked. And so I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm going to put this at half an inch either point because that's my center line. And then I just want to go ahead and score. And then I'll flip it over and do exactly the same thing. And when you've got a center point mark as clearly as this, that makes it easy. And all you'd have to do at this point is tack that down and then go ahead and punch two holes. And that's going to be for your stringing. And that would be pretty simple. You, of course, could stamp that. But now, let's look at some other things. So what you can do is take one of the smaller framelits and kind of do the same thing. Go ahead and punch some holes on either side. And we can string that as well. And I've already started decorating that one and I'll show you that when it's finished. But then I thought, well, why punch holes? Because I've got this framelit and this framelit. And so all I've done is position my framelit so that I wouldn't have to punch holes. And when I tie my cording down, let me stuff that candy in there, and decorated it, it would hold without a hole punch. And so that's kind of the first thing. So let's move on to sample number two. Okay, something like a candy caddy, you're going to want to mass produce. And so you want to make the most of your car stock. In this case, I've got 8.5 by 11, and I cut it at 3.5 across the width wise and left myself two quarter inch strips. And so now I'm going to do the same thing because what you'll notice is when you make this card caddy, you've got these points, and that takes away a lot of card stock but doesn't really add anything to your candy caddy. So I've done that, and now I'm going to bring in my magnetic template because I'm going to create a template. And when you're mass producing, templates are wonderful. And so here's my template. Here's going to be my top edge. And what I'm going to do now is position this and then put this right at the top. I'm just going to eyeball both sides. So that is going to be square. And even if you don't have a magnetic template, this is pretty easy to do. And so now I'm going to take my largest framelit and I'm going to scrunch it in there. And it doesn't want to move. And so I'm going to put this through my big shot. And what you're going to end up with is a piece like this. This is a different color because if you use two different pieces of cardstock and interchange them, that'll work well. Then, of course, you want that one inch strip. This happens to be five and a half, so I marked the center and then took half an inch and scored either way. And so I've got my little caddy. And then, as it happens, if you do that and you bring it like this, there is just enough remaining for you to take your other framelit and go ahead and cut out the companion piece. And so in this way I can make six uh, cart, uh, candy caddies pretty quickly. Okay, now I'm going to look at something that doesn't require a framelit. Okay, with this one it's kind of the same concept. We want to make a lot of them. So again, these are three and a half inch wide by six, and then that leaves me with this one and a half inch strip, 
which I cut into squares and embossed, and that's going to go to decorate the front. Now, when you mass produce, kind of similar to my matted pennants and banners, if you create a template, and again I've scored an inch in the middle, and I just want to put a point on this, so I'm just going to come with my template, some large scissors, and then cut. And this way, I only have to measure one time. So, very quickly, cut out those edges, I'm going to flip it around, line up the sides, and within no time I'm going to have these three cut out and ready to go. Okay, pretty quickly you've made three of these. Now for this template I just used white computer cardstock, so that's what I used to back this uh, two and a half inch square and also make the tags. And another little tip, actually this one would have a baggie full of candy. So I've got that in there with just a little piece of uh, pipe clear to hold that shut. Of course it would be filled with either candy or um, hair accessories or whatever you're giving away at your party. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is I love twines and ribbons, but if you go to the hardware store you pick up something like this. It's actually three ply and so with one length um, I've got these after pulling them through and I like the little wiggles. So anyway, something to think about. But after I made these, you don't have to stuff them with candy. I thought with Thanksgiving coming up, my kids used to love to make little place cards for everybody sitting at the table. And so this is the same design, except I didn't clip the ends, of course punched it. But this is something your kids could decorate. Actually, I think all these your kids can help you with. Stuff it with a napkin and you're ready to go. And then of course any party, depending on how you decorate it. Now this last one, I thought, okay, I don't want to punch holes again. What if you were to get a framelit that already had the holes in it to hold your ribbon? And so that's this one. It is called Resplendent Rectangles from Spellbinders. And so that is a neat framelit, especially if you had to make a lot of them. So anyway, I hope you took something with you that you and your child can put together together. Thank you for watching.